Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Apple M1 chip, what I like about it and what I don't like about it, and the restrictions that I have found with it. So the first problem I ran into, VMware does not work as seamlessly as I would have hoped, and it does make me very sad because I finally just gave up on VMware and decided to use Parallels. Parallels worked excellent. It already had a Kali download in the Parallels repository. It was super easy, very quick and easy to install. So Parallels, I guess, is going to be my go-to from now on if I'm gonna be using the M1 chip. So if you're gonna be using the M1 chip, the M2 chip, or the M1 Max, then I would suggest using Parallels right out of the gate. It is really simple to use and Kali is already in the repository. You just download it and it'll automatically open up for you. The second problem I found was that ExpressVPN is not supported with the Kali ARM 64. So you'll have to use NordVPN if you are wanting to use a VPN service. And the third issue I ran into was the Tor browser is not supported with the ARM64 edition of Kali Linux, which is what works with the M1 chip. This makes me very sad because it's really easy to use. You just install the Tor browser and then you're off and going. But I am still able to use the Tor network with proxy chains and I have a video about that. I can link it in the description if you're curious about using the Tor browser and how to install it, as well as using proxy chains. So I can still use the Tor service, it's just not with the Tor browser. So number four is not really a problem with the computer, but I have not noticed any speed gain from the i9 processor to the M1 Max chip. So if you think you're gonna get some crazy speed boost, it is just not there. I think you should be aware of that. Now off to the good things to say about the new MacBook Pro. The battery life seems to last forever. I'm really impressed with how long it lasts. It doesn't get hot, so my previous MacBook Pro with the i9 processor running dual monitors on the MacBook. The MacBook's fans were always running. It would get really hot. That does not happen with the MacBook Pro using the M1 chip. So it stays really cool, it's really quiet, and the battery lasts a really long time. So if you think those three things are a benefit, then you can go ahead and upgrade if you think they outweigh the negatives. I am curious to know if any of you out there use the Apple M1 chip, and if you have experienced any other problems that I just have not run into yet. Thanks for watching.